Welcome to the Peace and All Good podcast. My name is Shelly Roeder and I'm your host and this is episode eight, the final episode of season one. Uh, we are so grateful to everybody out there who's listening to the podcast, who's watching the podcast. Uh, we've learned so much in the first uh, season and hope that you have too. Um, today we have a very special guest on the podcast for a brief moment because she's already been disciplined for chewing the mic cord. Um, her name is Soki Roko, and she's a little terrier that we just adopted and added to our family. And she doesn't have a lot to say, do you, Soki? No, not a lot to say, but she wants to see you at the October 4th fundraiser for Franciscan Peacemakers. Do you hear that? She really wants you to be there. Um, maybe she wants to go to her sister, so I'll pass her off. Say bye, everybody. I'll see you October 4th. She wants you to go to the October 4th fundraiser, which is a pet blessing in honor of Franciscan Pe Peacemaker's 25th anniversary. Um, we were hoping to have a big gala. 2020 had different plans. And so we decided to turn it into something fun that could be done outdoors socially distanced, and then we also are including a virtual option. So there are lots of different ways to participate. Bring your pet to Mount Mary. Uh, there will be uh, uh, time slots you can, pick, you can pick in order to have your pet blessed by some Capuchins who are helping us out. A shout out to Robert Watipka, the Director of Capuchin Community Services, and David Heert, Capuchin who works in formation with the, the Capuchin Friars here in Milwaukee, both friends of mine and friends of our um, organization who are coming out to give official blessings um, to all those furry or winged or finned friends in your life. Um, you can tune in virtually through a Facebook Live event that it will be hosted by Wendy Smith, local expert. She's now gonna be a local celebrity host of our um, virtual pet blessing. She has got so much energy and she's already planning lots of antics for the time and it, we will have prizes, we will have um, the blessing. So if you tune in on Facebook, you'll, you'll be able to really participate um, fully. And for those of you who want to join us in person, if, I hope it's a beautiful day and there'll be a chance to be outside and, um, and see each other um, and celebrate all that we have accomplished as an organization through your support and all that we hope to accomplish. And what do pets have to do with our mission? Um, you know, I being Franciscan um, as an organization, St. Francis, you know, is, is known for his love of animals. But it goes deeper than that because St. Francis's thing was about right relationship, right? It was about being, being in right relationship with everything that's created, the sun, the stars, the moon, the wind, the water, the animals and each other. And being in right relationship is at the core of who we are at Franciscan Peacemakers because we just see so much brokenness. We see the brokenness of poverty, the brokenness of racism, the brokenness of sexism, and the brokenness that, in, that, in, that happens when people are abused as kids who don't remember their worth and value and then the ways in which people prey on that to make money, to fulfill their personal needs um, through the, the, the industry, really, of sex trafficking. So St. Francis was about us coming into right relationship with all created things, all created beings. And so that's the work of peacemakers. And we hope you've gotten a piece of that through the course of this season. Um, of the podcast. We would love to know from you all what you'd like to hear more of, what you what you really appreciated about the podcast. We do hope that we can have um, some feedback from you about what you've learned, what you've taken away, um, and where this podcast might go so it can better serve the community of listeners out there. So please reach out. Info at franciscanpeacemakers.com would be the email to um, direct that to, and also just the comments on YouTube or anywhere that you're listening. 
So in today's episode of the podcast, what I'd like to do is just kind of sum up the season of the podcast. We heard from Franciscan Peacemaker staff members. Deacon Steve was in episode one and episode five. In those episodes, he talked about kind of the overall mission of the Franciscan Peacemakers and how the work that we do on the streets is connected to the work that we do in advocacy around the issue of trafficking as a bigger issue that affects um, you know, every county in the, in the state. Um, we heard from Cynthia Perkins and Mary Leach Sumlin, who are the outreach team, uh, among other things, at Peacemakers. But we talked specifically about Claire Community and the role that Franciscan Peacemakers plays in um, supporting women once they decide to make the move towards healing, while also remaining connected to women on the street so that they know that they're being seen and that they are loved. Um, we heard from Carmen, who talked about her own sense of personal um, responsibility and mission to work with the women that we serve and how Franciscan spirituality fits into that for her. We heard from our board members, Deb Schneider and Wendy Smith, who've become really powerful advocates in Washington and Waukesha counties, working with survivors and, and groups to continue educating people about this issue. And we heard from Don Jones and Tamara Remington, who are retired law enforcement officials who continue to have a passion for working with people who have been affected by trafficking. And then we heard from Sarah Allison, one of our retail partners who sells our product and just the small way that everybody can participate in this work, including retail stores, right? So we heard from all these great people throughout the season of the podcast. And today I want to integrate a spiritual practice that's important for me in my own faith life um, with kind of a summary of what we heard. And that's by looking at the life of St. Josephine Bakita. St. Josephine Bakita is the patron saint of people who are trafficked. She lived in the late 19th century in Sudan and then in various places where she was work, where she was held as a slave. Her, her story to me is a really powerful way to try to understand what the healing process looks like for people who've suffered the unique trauma of human trafficking. So let me tell you about St. Josephine Bakita. Um, and I, I read about her, and this is my favorite, favorite book for learning about the lives of the saints. Robert Ellsberg edited this book, maybe wrote, I think probably wrote and edited this book, uh, which has a different saint for each day of the year. And saints, as defined by life's well, life well lived, even outside those who are canonized by the Catholic Church. Um, so this includes people from all different faith traditions, um, but many canonized saints as well. And in this book and in other sources, what I've read about St. Josephine Bakita is that she was kidnapped from a loving family at age nine. Um, and now we know that trafficking in the U.S. today, um, there's a lot of misconception around how trafficking happens. And so um, just to be clear, this was in the late 19th century in Sudan. She was kidnapped at the age of nine and sold into slavery. Um, that's not how trafficking tends to happen here. I think it's less than 3% of people who are trafficked are actually kidnapped or snatched um, in that way that we sometimes can, um, can, can hear about or get fearful around as a, you know, on social media and whatnot. Um, but St. Josephine, Josephine Bakita was kidnapped that way and sold into slavery at the age of nine. We don't exactly know what kind of slavery um, she was forced into, though we do know that her experience was so traumatic that she could not remember her own name. So we know today that trauma can really affect our brain and our, our development. And so we know that, that she was traumatized to the extent of not being able to remember her name. And the name Bakita is actually a name given to her by her captors. And it means the blessed one. 
So after being traded to several different um, owners, she ended up with a family who treated her relatively well and she cared for a young uh, child. And when that child entered boarding school, she came to know the Kenoshan sisters in Venice, Italy, because of the child she was caring for as a slave. And these sisters reached out to her. These sisters started to teach her about her human dignity by teaching her about the gospel, because that's what the gospel is about, right? Remembering that we are made in the image of God and that we uh, need to love others as though they are created in the image of God as well. So she began to hear this message from the Kenoshan sisters and began a relationship with them while working for a family, caring for the young child. This was in Venice. The family decided to move back to Sudan and to leave Venice. And this is where things get interesting because Josephine Bakita said, I'm not going to the family. She told the mistress of the family, I'm staying here. I have a community here and I'm growing in my faith and I'm staying. Well, this did not go over well for the owner of Josephine Bakita, right? This did not go well at all. And there was a standoff, a bit of like negotiation for a few days. And until the mistress said, you know what, you're my property and I'm taking you to court. So she took her to the court in Venice and they stood trial and the Kenoshan sisters stood behind Josephine Bakita and advocated for her and with her as she stood before the judge. And the judge ruled that Bakita was free all along. Slavery was not legal in any of the places where she had been traded. And so uh, legally she had always been free and so she was granted her freedom there and, there and then. And she was welcomed by the Kenoshan sisters into their community. She had a place to stay. She had work to do. She had a community to grow with and to love and to be loved by and to help her heal from her traumatic experience. She was a young adult at this point and had spent more than half of her life in captivity. So, as we know from our experience at Franciscan Peacemakers, that healing journey is quite lengthy and requires a great deal of trust in God, a great deal of spiritual fortitude, perseverance, and it requires the support of a whole host of people who can just hold space for that healing to take place. Well, the Kenoshan sisters did that for Bakita. And she ended up becoming a sister, spent her life in ministry to people who were in need, and then became canonized, right? So it's a beautiful story. And what I love is just the connections to what we see as a part of how people heal from trafficking today. Many of the people that we see are not kidnapped. You know, I don't know that any of the folks that we've ever served have been kidnapped in the way that Bakita was kidnapped, but all of them at some point had their innocence taken away through abuse, through neglect. So all of them have had experiences of trauma that have led to then believing that they weren't free right? Believing that they weren't worth the love of God or others in a way other than being used and exploited. Everyone we've served ha has had that similar experience to Bakita of not living in freedom, whether it's addiction that holds them captive or a person or group of people who hold them captive while exploiting their labor, using their body to make money, right? All of them have experienced not being free. And as we heard throughout the podcasts um, this season, there's a lot of things that have to happen for a woman to actually heal from this experience, right? 
Mary and Cynthia in episode three pointed that out so beautifully that there, there has to come a time when the woman herself decides that she's worth it. Cynthia says, you just get so tired of living the way you're living that you decide to do something else, right? So that was Bakita standing up to her mistress and saying, I'm not going. That same moment has to happen for the women for that healing process to start. And that has to come from the women themselves, right? Then what's needed is a lot of support, both from a community of people who can hold space for that healing, who can provide housing, jobs, addiction recovery, mental health care, health care, right? A community that can support and nurture a woman back to her full vibrant self and what's needed is for our legal structures to recognize the exploitation of trafficking for what it is and to prosecute and that requires that judges and police officers and medical personnel at emergency rooms and all of us that go through gas stations and hotels and truck stops that we recognize and know that this exists and what it looks like so that we can look people in the eye, show them their dignity in that moment, know the hotline number to call, offer that to people if we have privacy to know they're safe enough to receive that information, believe survivors when they tell us that they're being exploited listen to our teenagers when they talk about the mistakes they make online and not judge them as we heard from deb and wendy so beautifully in episode four just the the importance of understanding the issue from its legal point of view so that we can assure minors or women being exploited for profit that the law is on their side and, and that, that justice is possible. But it requires all those things, right? So just like with Paquita having the Kenoshan sisters to land with, she also had the law fall, fall in her favor to grant her the freedom that was rightfully hers. And survivors today are, are no exception to that. We need all parts working together to create the possibility for healing for women. And that's what we try to do at Peacemakers is to do our part, right? By continuing to reach out to survivors on the street every day with meals and smiles and words of encouragement through our Claire community where women can land and really get that holistic healing that they need in their mental health, in their physical health, in their spiritual health, in their employment, in their in their financial situation and their legal situation, right? And then working with the larger community to educate everybody about this issue. So this podcast is one way that we're doing that. And we are so, so grateful for you joining us for season one. We hope that you've found something of use here. We'd love to know how we can better serve the community, particularly during the pandemic when we don't have events to preach at and we don't have fairs to sell our product at. This is what we're doing. So we're hoping to do it well and we'd encourage, we'd encourage you to reach out info at franciscanpeacemakers.com to let us know how we're doing and to, to hear what you need from us to understand and to be a part of healing and justice for survivors of human trafficking. So. With that, I'll sign off. Season one is a wrap. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you find ways to integrate peace and all good into your life. And uh, we are so grateful to be on the journey with you. Take good care.